India's light combat aircraft, LCA, Tejas program is one of the boldest aerospace projects attempted by a developing nation in recent decades. After decades of flying Soviet origin fighters like MiG-21, India embarked on an ambitious journey in the 1980s to design, develop, and mass-produce its own supersonic fighter jet. Despite hurdles, delays, and global skepticism, the Tejas has matured into a formidable modern multi-role combat aircraft and has entered frontline service with the Indian Air Force, IAF, and Indian Navy. Yet, in Western defense commentary and aviation circles, the Tejas doesn't get the same recognition as its actual performance merits. Critics often label it lightweight or unsuccessful, while hyping up aircraft from Western manufacturers such as the F-16V, Eurofighter Typhoon, or F-35. But beneath the noise, Tejas is quietly proving itself to be a reliable workhorse with enormous potential. The only major bottleneck? India's lack of a fully indigenous jet engine. Developing a fighter jet is one of the most complex technological challenges a nation can take up, involving mastery over aerodynamics, avionics, material science, radar, weapon integration, and more. Until now, very few nations outside of the U.S., Russia, France, the U.K., China, and Sweden have pulled it off. India, starting from a weak industrial and R&D base in the 1980s, managed to design a 4.5-generation multi-role fighter with delta wings and high agility, integrate fly-by-wire flight control systems, giving Tejas superb maneuverability, develop a composite heavy airframe, over 45% composite by weight, reducing radar signature and weight, enhancing survivability, fit an integrated suite of sensors, including Israeli ELM-2052 AESO radar in MK-1A variant, modern electronic warfare pods, and helmet-mounted sights, Achieve full weaponization with beyond visual range missiles, BV RAM, like Derby and Astra, precision guided munitions, PGM, and air to ground strike capabilities. This wasn't just an aircraft, it was the building of an entire defense ecosystem spanning Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, DRDO Labs, private sector suppliers, and foreign technology partners. Today, the IAF has inducted TJS squadrons with orders for over 120 jets already placed and the improved TJS Mark II and twin-engine deck-based fighter, Ted BF, for the Navy are in the pipeline. Despite its smaller size compared to heavy fighters, TJS is optimized for agility, cost efficiency, and multi-role adaptability. Key strengths include agility and maneuverability. Its delta wing design and fly-by-wire system give it high agility comparable to the Mirage 2000 or Grapen, making it very effective in dogfights. Modern avionics. Tejas MK-1A comes with ESA radar, advanced electronic warfare suite, and network-centric warfare capability, matching or exceeding some legacy Western fighters. Weapons flexibility. Can carry Western, Israeli, and indigenous Indian weapons, making it versatile. It can fire Astra air-to-air -air missiles, precision bombs, and Brahmos NG in the future. Cost advantage. A Tejas MK-1A costs roughly $40, $45 million, significantly cheaper than F-16V, tilde $65M, Gripen E, tilde $80M, or F-35, tilde $110M. For countries needing affordability plus performance, Tejas is disruptive. Quick maintenance and sorties. Chal optimized Tejas for short turnaround times, meaning it can fly multiple sorties per day. This is ideal for high-intensity combat, made for high-altitude warfare. Unlike many Western fighters designed for European or maritime theaters, Tejas is designed for the Indian subcontinent's unique high-altitude battlefields, giving it an edge in places like Ladakh against China. With all these features, why do Western analysts often dismiss Tejas as an underperformer? There are several reasons. A. Geopolitical bias. Defense commentary is dominated by Western think tanks and arms industry lobbyists. Promoting Tejas would threaten the export markets of Western jets like the F-16, Gripen, or F-35. If countries see Tejas as a viable, cheaper option, it hurts Western defense sales. B. Arms trade politics. Western nations use arms exports as a strategic influence tool. For instance, the U.S. and France often demand basing rights, technology locks, or political alignment in exchange for fighters. A successful Indian export like Tejas would offer countries a non-aligned alternative, reducing Western leverage. C. Narrative of developing nations can't innovate. There's a long-standing tendency to downplay indigenous tech from developing nations. 
Whether it's Brazil's Embraer jets, Iran's drone industry, or India's ISRO space missions, Western discourse often portrays such projects as inferior until proven in combat. D. Delays and growing pains. Tejas faced decades of delays due to bureaucratic hurdles and changing IAF requirements. Critics still use these early setbacks to brand the program failure, conveniently ignoring that even the F-35 had massive cost overruns, delays, and problems, yet still gets praised. The only major limitation holding Tejas back from complete independence is its reliance on foreign engines. Current Tejas MK-1A uses the GEF-404 engine. Future Tejas MK-2 will use the GEF-414 engine, built with transfer of technology in India. Indigenous attempt at a fighter-class engine, Kaveri by DRDO's GTRE, fell short due to metallurgy and thrust-to-weight challenges. Why this matters? Without an Indian jet engine, Tejas production will always depend on U.S. export approvals, risking sanctions or denial in crises. Engine technology is kept as a closely guarded crown jewel by the U.S., Russia, and Europe. No one willingly transfers full, hot-section metallurgy secrets. To be truly self-sufficient, India must crack turbine blade tech, single crystal alloys, ceramic matrix composites, and afterburner efficiency. The good news, India is now co-developing next-gen engines with Safran, France, and possibly Rolls-Royce, while DRDO has restarted work on Kaveri upgrades for unmanned combat systems. The IAF plans to induct at least 200-plus Tejas fighters in coming years. These will gradually replace aging MiG-21S and Jaguars. In joint operations with the Rafale, Su-30 MKI, and future AMCA stealth fighter, Tejas will play a vital frontline role. If backed with political will, Tejas could become the Kalashnikov of fighter jets. Affordable, reliable, and widely used. In conclusion, India's Tejas fighter is more than just a combat aircraft. It is a symbol of self-reliance and national pride, proof that India can enter the exclusive club of modern jet designers. The West downplays Tejas because it doesn't fit their narrative of dependency and challenges their arms monopoly. In combat effectiveness, Tejas is no toy. It's a lethal, cost-efficient modern fighter tailored for India's environment and strategic needs. The only missing piece is an indigenous jet engine. Once India closes that gap, Tejas and its successors will no longer depend on foreign nods to fly. And when that happens, the beast in the sky will roar louder than ever on its own power. Thank you for watching. If you found the video insightful, hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.